everyone, and welcome to the Dr. Music Podcast, where today I have with me Mr. Bob Madsen. Bob is a bassist and a songwriter for band projects like 41.9, Operation Paperclip. Uh, the Graffenberg Disciples is what we are focus on, focusing on today uh, with vocalist Hans Eberbach. Uh, Graffenberg Disciples have released a brand new single called Cry a Million Tears, a uh, video to go with it. Uh, they're getting ready to release their sophomore LP called Breathing Through My Ears. Uh, Bob, that's a great title, man. Breathing Through My Ears. That is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit, it. of a, a bit of a joke based on the uh, the name of the band, the Graffenberg Disciples. Breathing I, Through Your Ears is something every Graffenberg Disciple should learn how to do. <laughs> there you go. No <laughs> doubt. You know, I, I hear Graffenberg Disciples, and I think Graffenberg... A uh, German scientist uh, known for the G spot, <laughs> of course. Uh, he, he has something to do with this title, doesn't he? Yes, he does. As a matter of fact, the whole thing was just a, a joke. All, all the names of my bands have inside jokes, but um, a lot of people don't even know that the G spot actually its full name is the Grafenberg spot. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and and it was only discovered in uh, the early 1950s by this Austrian gynecologist. And I just thought it was the, the most hilarious act of hubris, male misogyny, that this German doctor, Grafenberg, decided that he was going to discover this and then plant his flag on it and name <laughs> it after himself. And I could just imagine women all over the world going, Oh, yes, honey, that's very nice. Let's put that up on, on the refrigerator with the drawing you did of Aunt Judy last week, okay? <laughs> right, right. You know? And can you remember where it is? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we just thought it was hilarious. So we came up with the name. I came up with the name. And then, of course, the first album was called Johnny on the Spot. Mm -hmm. yep. And now <laughs> breathing, breathing Through My Ears uh, just seemed to be a sort of a natural evolution. And we even have a name for the next one that's going to be even more of a joke. Uh, fun tying in with it, but I'm going to leave, leave that for later interviews. All right. All right. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. You know, now this brand new record, uh, Breathing Through My Ears, full length record, correct? That is correct. Fantastic. Same band as the uh, the first record? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, down to the last man. Um, wow. Let's face it, when you have. Look, I am absolutely amazed at the level of musicianship uh, that I've been able to, you know, rally around around this project. And when you've got such amazing players, uh, there's no reason to change it. I mean, it just works. Yeah. You know, we've got uh, Greg Bissonette on drums. We've got Jerry Merrill on keys. Uh, Chad Quist from Heart by Heart on guitar. He was also a member of 41.9 for a while. And then we were able to bring in outside players on various different instruments and uh, vocals were extremely capable, well, not capably, extraordinarily handled by uh, Hans Eberbach, also known as Marsha, by the way. And um, Marsha, and Marsha, Mar Marsha. <laughs> exactly. He said, that's it, exactly. It was Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Why is it always about Marsha? Um, so, yeah, his nickname is Marsha and he actually loves it. It's pretty funny. But, um, uh, and then we also have our uh, secret weapon, uh, a background vocalist and, and sort of vocal arranger by the name of uh, Molly Roth, who is just she's she's my she's I keep her in my back pocket. She's my secret weapon on these kinds of things. Man, and it is uh, if if somebody is watching and has not heard Grafenberg Disciples, please, please, please do yourself a favor, go listen to this band. Uh, Hans is just, he's a warm blanket, man. I mean, it's just, you know, I got, um, you know, I see, and I see Terrence Trent Darby in the background. He's got that throaty, wispy Terrence Trent Darby soul thing happening. Um, uh, Michael, um, my, my mind is blank. Um, but there, you know, he was, I've heard, I hear, I hear a lot of soul in that voice. Um, yes. you know, when you're, when you're writing for something like that, now you, you've written for a lot of jazz and funk and progressive rock and, and things like that. This is 
some of that, but it's a little more standard strong song structure. Um, and it's, you know, centered a lot of it centered around that beautiful vocal. Michael Bolton is who I was thinking of, um, <laughs> you know, uh, does it, does that afford you? I mean, how do you write for something like this as opposed to something like you've done more of in the past with the progressive style? Is it difficult to write for this, or is it a little bit easier? How's that work for you? You know, it's really no different. Um, in all of the projects that I do, I write for the, the strengths of the vocalists and the strengths of the the players. In this case. Uh, you know, every every member of the band plays so many different styles of music um, that we really, when we get together, we don't have a set way that we want to do or a set direction. We just kind of want to, hey, let's play all of them. Um, so we have fun. And we write the music, and then I write the lyrics. And then Hans and I get together, and we sort of shoehorn what I write into these songs, you know, as far as lyrics. Mm -hmm. And... You know, one of the things I learned a long time ago is when you have players at this level, uh, you don't keep them on a leash. You don't tighten the leash. You mm -hmm. give them the tools they need and say, go with it. Make it your own. Do what you need to do. And every single time, these guys have just taken these little kernels that I may come up with and develop them to far greater than I would have ever expected. I'm the worst player in the band and I'm barely hanging on by my fingernails with these guys. <laughs> they are just phenomenal. It, it 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 gives you something to look forward to and it gives you a challenge every time, which is just wonderful. And you know, I and I, I'm sure they feel that same way. Uh you know, like Yeah, they all think the other guys in the band are really good too. Right, right. The bass player. <laughs> and, you know, and and that's what it's really uh, that's why I love progressive music. Uh so much is you know it can go off the rails you know there's no doubt about that there are progressive bands that are just off the rails every time but it's a fun adventure i you know i appreciate it uh, i i used to have a uh, a very dear friend of mine sort of my musical mentor his name was tom size and he was the second engineer on journey's escape and frontiers he did all the mr big albums did almost all the enchant albums after I introduced him to Enchant, uh, and all of those kinds of guys. And um, he used to say that Enchant musicians were simply rock musicians that couldn't edit themselves. <laughs> there you go. That's perfect. That is perfect. <laughs> you know, and that's that's kind of what it feels like. But, you know, if you like progressive music, you don't want an edit. Uh, I know, I know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's so much fun to just hear guys like yourself who are just extremely talented to just go off uh, and just, you know, do what they do. Uh, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun, for sure. It is. In, in my case, it's just that uh, uh, well, I have another nickname, it's kind of Mr. Verbosity, and I have a tendency to write way too many lyrics. So for me to do a three, three and a half minute pop song, uh, I'm losing the plot. I have to edit down so much that, you know, it starts to look like something completely mismatched. So right. I need the extra time, especially since I've been influenced by, by guys like Derek Dick of, uh, of fit or fish, you know, Merlin. And, uh -huh. uh, stuff. Yeah. and um, but also Tony Carey too. Uh, Tony was a big influence and in the way he told stories within his songs. Mm -hmm. I like telling stories. So Everything that I'm I'm writing these days is essentially a vehicle for telling a story of some kind or another. Yeah, yeah, and and it's great, uh, you know. And and speaking of that, you know, I, in in the introduction, I, I didn't say philanthropist, but you really are. You're doing great things for our society through your music. Um, you're trying to. Uh, okay, well, I'll I'll you know, accept that I'm trying to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, it is having an effect and, uh, you know, there's this great causes. Uh, let's, we'll sit, start with no words kind of thing. Mm. Uh, you on the first record, no words, Neil Peart dies. Um, and you write this song. Uh, how's that come about for you? Uh, how did that song come together? Significance of the title, uh, and tell us where, where the profits for that song go. Okay. Um, there's actually a funny story associated with that as well. Um, so the song, okay, so Neil Peart, the drummer from Rush, passed away suddenly. 
And I remember exactly where I was when I first heard the news. And um, the first thing that went through my mind was, oh, my God, there's going to be no more words. There's no words to describe this. And there's no words to look forward to coming from Mr. Peart. Now, I've been a huge Rush fan, but I kind of drifted away from them in the, la in the, the latter years. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found Neil's books highly inspiring. And they actually inspired me to learn how to ride a motorcycle, to get the same bike that he has, and to go on rides, you know, the same basic basic things that he was doing. Yeah. Um, and the words pretty much wrote themselves. I, I knew I wanted to write something that would talk about the loss, but do it in a respectful way that wasn't too maudlin, and also would, um, would weave all these wonderful quotes and things about his life into the storyline. And then we were very lucky on the video that we were able to enlist the help of uh, Michael Mosbach, who was Neil's writing partner. So all the footage that you see in the video is actually brand new, never before seen footage from the R40 tour of them riding together from location to location. And he also reached out and he got a bunch of cameos from Neil's friends to show up in the video. And then we opened it up to fans around the world who sent in short video clips of themselves um, holding like a piece of rush, their favorite piece of rush memorabilia or, or memory. And I got to say, I, unfortunately to this, to this day, I still think I got more out of the process than, you know, Neil's charity did. Although we have donated all proceeds from the, the album to a, a, a brain, a glioblastoma brain cancer research fund that Neil set up shortly before his death. So it's Cedar Sinai. Now, the funny the funny story is that, and I don't remember the exact amount, but it was a significant amount. Um, we put this out there, and it had it, it got a lot of not great likes. A lot of uh, you know, it's been seen twenty thousand times on on YouTube, which is not bad for a prog band. Yeah. Um, but there was no trolls, no down, no naysayers, no nothing. Okay. Which is almost unheard of. I was going to say that doesn't yeah. happen in today's it world. It doesn't. No. Um, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully this comment doesn't like start them up. Uh, <laughs> but what it, let's face it, streaming YouTube, et cetera, it doesn't pay. Okay. It doesn't pay worth squat. So we hadn't really raised a lot of money until about a, six months ago, I get this phone call from Cedar Sinai or actually, no, it was an email from Cedar Sinai saying, Guess what? You raised, I think it was like thirteen thousand dollars for the fund, and I was over the moon. It's like, wow, people have been donating without without me knowing. Well, so I post all over the place about it. I'm flying high. I'm really happy. Turns out it wasn't me at all. It wasn't even the video at all. It was Michael who had done a fundraiser on his Instagram that raised all the money but he was using the link that I set up with Cedar Sinai as the conduit. Right. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, at least, at least money's going to, to a good cause. Yeah. I'm okay with that. And then uh, matter of fact, they use the same link at the, uh, the Bubba bash. And I understand they raised yeah. a significant amount. Uh, I was supposed to go to that show, but a, uh, a tendon injury prevented me from traveling. So I wasn't able to go, uh, but one of the neat, really, really neat side effects of that video is that I became friends with Kevin J. Anderson as a result. Kevin was the guy who wrote uh, the books with Neil, right, uh, right, right. Clockwork Angels stuff. And so a very nice friendship has developed. And we were supposed to go hang, and I couldn't go. Ah, that's yeah, it really sucked. Right. But from what I understand, uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. It was just an incredibly moving, emotional um uh, and all the hats off to why, why not and everybody involved in Michael yeah. and Mike Portnoy and uh, you know, all the guys that, that played, it was just, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I can imagine uh, such a monumental uh, figure in my world for sure. Growing up with that music, uh, but just the music in general, uh, I don't think the, you know, nobody did it quite like the professor, you know, no. uh, you no. know, the music and words uh he was the master for sure yeah yeah huge influence huge yeah. influence on us yeah yeah and, and so many uh and it's 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 a huge loss and uh it's just a great song 
to to remember Neil with. Uh, did you ever did you ever get a chance to meet Neil? No, no, never yeah. did. Uh, yeah. Never met anybody in the band. Um, only a couple of a uh, couple of sort of second circle surrounding. You know, guys like Kevin and and Michael and right. stuff like that, right. which are they're, they're great people. They're really are really great people. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was. As a matter of fact, when uh, when I went to get the um, the footage from Michael, it turns out that it just happened. I mean, we had no plan on this, but it just happened to be the first anniversary of Neil's death. And so on that night, uh, I found myself in the stateroom of a yacht down in Southern California drinking scotch that was old enough to vote um, <laughs> with two of Neil's best friends and having them tell me about the shenanigans that they used to get up to in between tours and on tour and all of this kind of stuff. It was extraordinarily surreal experience, yeah. uh, but, um, but certainly bittersweet. Yeah. 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 And that's uh, it's great that you've had that opportunity though. Uh, it's, it's special. Uh, do you know if Getty or, or Alex have heard the song? No, you know, I really don't know. Um, there's been no feedback. Nobody's reached out. The only, the only people that have actually reached out have been uh, Kevin, Michael, and some other people that have just commented very, very nicely. Fans, there's been a lot of comment commentary from fans yeah. um, saying how much they enjoyed the the show or the song and that it was uh, brought tears to their eyes. But I think most of the time, I got the impression it was happy tears. It yeah. Was, Here's a remembrance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a tribute like like none other, really. Uh, it's it's special. You. It is really special. Greg Bissonette on drums. Uh, he is on the new record, correct? Yes. Uh, he and I have done about five five records together. Um, he is just a wonderful man, very warm, yeah. very giving, and you cannot throw him for a loop. You can't. <laughs> you can toss him any style of music and he plays it as if he's been rehearsing that particular song for months and yet he's never even heard the song he's phenomenal yeah, yeah. He, uh, he is he is one of the great drummers of our time i think uh, yeah. for now sure that actually okay that actually does bring up another uh quick story when we were recording the no words uh song there's some rush stuff playing in the background and uh, just sort of timekeeping percussion kind of stuff. And when Greg had just done his tracks and he came back into the control room to listen back, he was sitting at, he has a little work table and he was sitting at the work table and his head was down and we we're listening to it going, wow, this is really cool. It's just goosebumps. We have, we know that we're onto something here. And I look over at Greg and he looks up at me and he has tears in his eyes. And I stopped the playback. I said, are you okay? And he said, yeah, I just never thought I'd be playing with Neil again. Yeah. And wow. it, was, it was a sobering moment. What a lot of people don't know is that uh, Greg and Neil did a Buddy Rich tribute band mm -hmm. called Bur or a Buddy Rich tribute project called Burning for Buddy mm -hmm. that was very successful in New York. And the two of them had a pretty close relationship. For and I, I think Greg actually gave him some instruction, did he not? Uh, that is, I remember that is correct. Like that. Yeah, um, from what Greg told me, and I didn't really, I knew a part of this because of mentions within some of the books, but I didn't realize that the two of them used to get together at Greg's house in Southern California, set up two drums in his two drum sets in his living room, and jam, and they would jam swing jazz because that's something that Neil wanted to learn. Yeah, yeah, wow, and uh, yeah, well, fly on the wall, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow, I probably would have been swatted, though. No, what was that? I probably would have been swatted, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't even imagine being in that room, uh, while they're doing that. Uh, it's uh, I don't know if I would survive, <laughs> I'd faint, I think. Uh, just crazy. Um, there's a fun thing you got with Cry a, Mil uh, a Million Tears as well yeah. uh, with the Rush tribute concept. A uh, lot of lot of references to Rush songs and things like that, the Rush world. Yeah. Uh, what inspired you to do it again, uh, other than no words, in this new track, Cry a Million Tears? And will that kind of be a trademark 
for Graffenberg Disciples? Will there be a Rush tribute track on each album, you think? You know, I really don't know. We don't actually go into writing the albums with a set idea. I'll have little germs of songs, um, sort of like, you know, fungal infections. Germs. <laughs> um, and um, the, with, okay, so with Cry a Million Tears, what we decided to do uh, just because we had such success with the No Words um video and we're still kind of processing everything with neil's neil's passing we decided to sneak in easter eggs gotta be fun you know when you watch a marvel movie there's always these little easter eggs about upcoming things and, and different references and stuff and, yeah. and it's always fun to see how many of them you can you can pick out you know um it's kind of like the after credit scenes that they always do they're always fun right. to point out these things um so we decided to sneak in uh, a bunch of rough easter eggs into the the screenplay that was also i think this only the second time i had ever directed a video okay um that would actually have a storyline and all this kind of stuff so we snuck in these different things and um anybody that watches the video okay the video is obviously out now if you watch the video and you can count the number of rush easter eggs if you send us an email at info at the highlander code.com uh, the correct number of answers will win a free download of the album. Okay. Um, yeah. Which is, you know, which, it's just ways to, to have fun. Yeah. And, um, but the, the really, the most amazing thing about shooting that video was actually the process because I had this incredible line producer by the name of Arlene Barshinger who helped me get all the talent, put everything together. And we, we rented a, uh, an Airbnb down in uh, Woodland Hills, California. And we actually ended up shooting two videos the same weekend. Okay. Well, I was going to ask you that if, if you got yeah. another one. Yeah. Oh yeah. We have, we have actually another three waiting in the, in the wing. Some of them which are going to be really kind of, we hope to be somewhat groundbreaking, but um, this is the first time that Hans had acted in a video. Now he is, he is a Michael Hutchins level lead performer Okay, he, when you watch him, when the first couple times I saw him with this other band, Joy and Madness, uh, which is a, a fantastic eight-piece horn funk band in Sacramento. Okay, so it's what like is it called? Joy and Madness. Joy it's and Madness. wonderful stuff, just yeah. funky. But um, one of the things that, that totally sold me on him was how he had the audience eating out of the palm of his hand. I mean, he just everybody was riveted, mm -hmm. and so that part of him I knew, but I didn't know whether he'd be able to act. And so when he came down, you know, he flew down to, to Southern California to do the, the, the video. And we we're going through the first couple of takes and it was, it was okay. It wasn't great. And so his co-star Eve Moreau, now she's been on, she's a working actress. She's been on NCIS and Cypher and the oath and movies and all this kind of stuff. Right. And it was obvious that there was a mismatch, right? But between Arlene and Eve, they started working with Hans and they brought out the performance. So when he's emoting in that song and when he when you see those tears, those aren't crocodile tears. Those are real tears based on emotions that he was bringing up to serve that performance. It was method acting. And Hans and I are very, very good friends. And so I kind of knew where some of that pain was was coming from. And it actually physically hurt me to watch one of my best friends going through that on camera. And it was even worse it, at the end of it to go, that was great, but can we get another take? <laughs> it was horrible. But, you know, he persevered. He was, a, he was an amazing trooper. So he persevered, got through it. And I think the results speak for themselves. Um, I'm very, very proud of it. You wouldn't know he wasn't an actor. Uh, yeah, I, seriously. He, the funny I, thing is, he can't watch it. He yeah. can't watch. He can't watch the video. He's so critical of himself. He's like, oh, you know? <laughs> but, but everybody else is just wow. Well, you know, and I think what it is with Hans, uh, aside from that deep tone and beautiful voice that he has, he has a very natural look. Uh, you know, his his he maybe gives just a bit crunchy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the beauty of it. 
<laughs> you know, he's, he's not giving it a, a huge try to look, you know, no, like no. a model or anything. He is, he is who he is. He comes out there, you know, hair's a little bit not perfect, you know, exactly. and that is great. I, that is a very comfortable thing, along with the voice, uh, which is, like I said, a warm blanket. He is just a comfortable guy to look at and hear. Yeah, he's actually very comfortable. He also makes people around him feel very comfortable. He's very self-effacing, uh, very modest, very humble. Until you get him on stage. <laughs> and then, man, it's Liberace all the way, baby. <laughs> and and which it should be. Yeah, it is, it is absolutely wonderful to watch. But no, he and I have become really good friends. And um, I, I do count him as one of my best friends. And um, that camaraderie actually helps us do different things. Now, there's there's stuff on the first album and on this album that he's never attempted before. There's different styles, phrasing, tone tone, tone elements. And uh, it's that he knows that I'm never going to ask him to do something that's going to make him look like a fool. Okay. And that confidence in each other and in what each other do has led to some, in, in my mind, some beautiful moments. When he t tracks, my biggest challenge is not finding a performance that's good enough. But it's actually going through the performances and, and trying to winnow down between, you know, it, it's 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 having too many choices. I can use that track. I can use this take. I can use that take. They're right. all fantastic. So how do I choose which one to use? It's that editing thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. And another interesting thing on the video that, speaking of editing, that not maybe a lot of people will know is that uh, that video was actually edited by Dan Reed of the Dan Reed Network. Ah, yes. He is an amazing filmmaker and uh, screenwriter and video editor and artist. So he's got all these other things going, but he's also got this amazing uh, other side that I got to, to learn about him. And he's been extremely helpful in, uh, in the videos. He's That's done awesome. five or six of them for us. That is awesome. That's really cool. Uh, you know, and, and I hear Graffenberg Disciples and I hear that first record, Johnny on the Spot. Um and I, I they're so it's diverse. It's very diverse and schizophrenic. For, you can say that? It. you can say it. It's okay. Schizophrenic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, which is good. Um, but I hear you know that soulful thing in in the ballads and and you know almost. Uh, do you play fretless on on the record? I do play fretless um, about a third of the time. Okay, I'm not very good on fretless. Uh, um, Sounds great to me. <laughs> thanks. It, it I'm does. more more of a fretted player. Uh, my one of my biggest influences uh, are guys like Stanley Clark and Mark King, Level Forty Two. Um, you know all the flippity flappity stuff. Okay, uh, but occasionally I get to pull out my Pino Palladino chops and a really really bad impersonation of Pino Palladino, and get to play some of that stuff. Um, I did. Unfortunately, you know, I didn't get to do it very long, but I did study under Michael Manring for a little while. Okay. Oh. okay. And Michael is a well-known fretless player. Yep. And light years beyond me. Uh, I wish I could have kept it up more, but I do. You know what the thing is? Studying with Michael and listening to Pino, I know what fretless should sound like. And I know how far short I fall. <laughs> you're so modest yeah i mean you're one of the great bass players uh that i've heard really uh oh. <laughs> and, and it's it's funny to hear you say that because it, it, i just so highly respect your playing i it's just wow what <laughs> thank you seriously um you know the, the it's thing like i'm gonna be the new market in the band yeah <laughs> uh no seriously it's uh it, it, your talent's immense um but, you know, I hear that first record, I hear all that diversity, things like, uh, you know, the man who would be king. Um, it's very go west, dirty loops kind of. Oh, that's another bunch of monsters. Oh, my God. Dirty loops are incredible. Oh, oh, it's just that that's even I mean, <laughs> mm. wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love that stuff. Um it's funky and jazzy with a catchy 
pop thing going on too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very hard to do. Uh, but there's deep soul and funk uh, elements and, you know, a straightforward rock thing too. Um, is it, I mean, when you're writing, do you write for a specific style or does it just kind of happen organically? A little bit of both, to be honest with you. Um, most of the time, we'll start off with something and then it'll take on a life of its own and kind of develop in a certain way. Uh, there are other times when, um, you know, I have to admit that this, this project is a little bit of a bucket list project for me. I get to, because there's no restrictions, I get to dabble my feet in all sorts of different waters. And like, for instance, on the last album, um, I've always been a big fan of the old GRP productions, the uh, Grusen Rittenauer productions with uh, Dave Grusen, Lee Rittenauer, and they did a lot of Brazilian stuff. Yvonne, Yvonne Linz is probably one of my favorite singers. Okay. And so I always wanted to do a little bit of that. And so with, on the song, The Girl with the Broken Smile, we were able to explore that. And because I'm so lucky to be working with these, these guys, they can do that stuff. You know, they can just go off on a tangent. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it, it's pretty powerful to be able to do that or to be able to have them come, you know, I'll start with a baseline perhaps, and then they'll come back and go, well, what if we went here or what if we took it this way? And like I said, you, you just hold on. You're in for a ride. Yeah, it's great. It's great when you can fire up the the big machine to get where you're going. You know, uh, you know, a Prius is great, but a Ferrari will get you around the track a little faster. You know, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you got a Ferrari here for sure uh, mm -hmm. with Grafenberg Disciples. It's it, it's a great project. Um, the, the the freedom and the challenges. Uh, I think about, you know, the freedom you have with a more progressive thing mm -hmm. where you can kind of explore and go off those rails a little bit and come back. Uh, it's a little more fluid maybe where, you know, with Grafenberg, you're, you're, you do a little bit of that, but it's, it's a little more standard strong song structure. Is that a challenge for you to stay within that song? No, not 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 really. Um, again, it's more about a, a matter of trying to tell the stories that I, I write about with the lyrics. And so, to my mind, the music is actually a vehicle for telling the stories, and about, it's all about providing four wheels upon which you're going to put these lyrics and push it down the road. And so, it really kind of everything has to serve the song. Everything has to serve what the song is trying to say, what the lyrics are trying to say. And so, it really hasn't been an issue. Uh, but the interesting thing to me is when people listen to it, they hear prog elements. We've got, you know, one foot in the prog world, and then we've got another foot in pop and funk. And then we've got another foot in, the, you know, we've, we're kind of a friggin' octopus. Yeah, we've got totally. Feet in different things, um, which means that, you know, we're, we're going live with this project. This actually is going to go out and tour. It is going to play live. Uh, we've got the band. We I've I got the band together. That's um, great. Yeah, we actually do have. We're uh, we're rehearsing. We've got a band lineup that's going to go. And <clears throat> but how do you go to a promoter and tell them this is what we are? Right. You know, I would love to play Rosfest or Cal Prague or uh, any one of the Prague festivals over in Europe. But if they were to. You ever heard that story of the four blind men that meet an elephant? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. One one man walks into a leg. He bumps into a leg and he thinks he's hit a, a column. Another man bumps into the side of the elephant and he thinks he's hit a wall. Um, another man um, gets hit by uh, the tusk and he thinks he's hit a spear. And another man recoils in horror after he's hit the trunk because he thinks it's a snake. Right. So if you look at Grafenberg and just listen to one, maybe two songs, you're not going to get an idea of what we are. That'll get, you're going to think you've hit the snake, you've hit the wall, you've hit the column, whatever. Um, so how do you go to a promoter and say, hey, we're Prague, 
but we're proud that you dance to. Right, we're we're right. proud that your girlfriend will probably like. Okay, right. things like that. Um, we, I have no idea how to go about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is tough. And uh, you, you know, I, I guess there would be a fear of not being accepted by the really proggy, nerdy prog guys. Uh, you know, uh, it's not yeah. prog enough. Uh, because your girlfriend likes it, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there yeah. is that, you know, I've purposely a long time ago made the decision that I wasn't going to concern myself because those were certain camps. There was either the Genesis camp, there was the yes camp, there's the dream theater camp, there's the rush camp. Uh, I wasn't going to overly concern myself with purists, right? Um, what a lot of people don't realize, and it's something I've been saying for years and years and years, progressive music listeners are some of the most intelligent, well-versed, and most rounded individuals that you're ever going to meet on this planet. There's always a statistical outlier that's going to be, this is what I like, and that's it. Right. But if you go, you know, if I were to, if I were to look at your CD collection, which is extremely impressive behind you, I'm going to bet that there's music from all sorts of different range from pop, funk, jazz, classical, prog, metal, all of the various sub categories of that one, yep. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to find a lot of different stuff, you know, yes, you would <laughs> probably won't find Britney Spears in there, but that's, that's beside the point. <laughs> but the thing is, yeah, don't play like people are stupid. Most people are intelligent. And they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna like it or they're not gonna like it. But if it tells a story, does it in a way that you can groove to, and it doesn't you know sound horrible, the odds are they're not they they might like it. Yeah. Oh, and and I I see I see the prog crowd loving this really. Uh, <laughs> other than that, you know that small you know blinders on. Uh, you know, there's Karens in every bunch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, it, well, it's musical. Uh, you have people who can play. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, they are, you know, the. the, the, the I tell the, you. This band I'm, are incredible musicians. I'm hanging on by the skin of my teeth. I swear to God. These guys, <laughs> every single one of them. I mean, the guy who empties the trash can can, can play rings around. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's cool. Now tell me about the tour. Uh, you know, and I want to respect your time. I know you got, I'm sure you got a lot of things to do. Yeah. Uh, um, well, our first gig is coming up um, in April. And then uh, we are hoping to parlay that into some more, uh, some more dates, uh, we're taking it sort of one step at a time. Uh, there is, the show is very, uh, very technical in nature. There's a lot of technology involved. Um, there's vignettes and, you know, we're going from one, one type of song to another and it's going to have, it's hopefully going to take the listener or the viewer, the, the concert attendee, uh, on a journey. They're going to go through ups and they're going to go through downs. They're going to do all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, at least I hope. And, um, so we're all working out all of that. And then we're also looking for, uh, a booking agent, you know, um, we've been active in that, uh, and we're doing PR to try and get more int interest in the in the album, so that we can actually get our metrics up because that's what they want to see, yep. and we'll go from there. Um, the idea is that you know, if everything goes well, uh, we'll do some dates throughout this year, and then in twenty four, hopefully, we'll be able to get overseas, which is what kind of my dream is. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. Oh, man. I look forward to it. I'm here in Chicago. So don't, don't forget about Chicago here. We, we'd love to see you. Oh, yeah. I, I've never been to Chicago. I have always wanted to. Awesome. I, I understand. I got to try that deep dish pizza. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, baby. Bring it on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I There's a reason I look like I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, any any kind of food you like, it's here. Uh, and, you know, it's a great musical city. It really is. Uh, you know, I've grown up here. i uh, lived my all of my adult life here. Uh, I can find it all here. 
Uh, and, and there's different clubs for every music, uh, and everybody just uh, it, it's a great musical uh, community. Uh, That's it, cool. Yeah, you know, the thing really is, neat. music is being kept alive by guys like you. Okay, we are. There's a lot of different competitive entertainment out there that used to not be there. You know, music music was a bigger portion of yeah. the entertainment spectrum. But now there's a lot more competition. And when I look out there and I see guys like you, uh, guys like the fans, ladies like the fans, the interesting thing, like Cry a Million Tears, fully 85, maybe 90% of the respondents are women. Thank you, Hans. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, but those, I look at those people and I just, I feel an intense gratitude because they are keeping this art form alive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know what I do without, you know, music like yours and music like all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, it gets me through the day. And, you know, not to say that you know, I have a wonderful wife, two wonderful kids, uh, you know, a beautiful dog and cat. Yeah. It's all contrib But the sound that's in my ears uh, and the access that I can grab something out of here mm -hmm. and go to another world, uh, yeah. that's immeasurable. It really, it really is. And it, it just blows my mind that, you know, essentially the order of 12 tones and different rhythms is such is something that our species emotionally responds to. It just blows me yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. The science of it is is tremendous. Yeah. Uh, really. Although I, let me let me just uh, I am looking at that by saying 12 tones. I'm looking at that as an entirely a Western bias. I'll, yeah, well, I'll, I, yeah. I have to clear that up because obviously other areas have more than 12 tones. Yep. Um, and I'm, yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm aware of my limitations. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, no, no Indian music or, or African rhythms coming well, up. Or... African, definitely. I'm a huge uh, Johnny Clegg fan, Yusu and our, um, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, world music is it, you can hear it in Grafenberg, it's, it's where I get to actually bring some of that some of that influence in right. uh, yeah, but cool. Indian music uh Asian music um uh, I'm just not good enough yeah I mean yeah, somebody like you know Anushka Shankar yeah yeah uh, oh I, I'm I listen and watch and it's like how does that I just I, I can't even conceptualize think, doing that <laughs> I think you have to I think you have to be exposed to it all of your life for your ears to actually get so incredibly accurate. Yeah. I mean, it's my assumption, but yeah. either you're born with that accuracy or you have to develop it with repeated exposure to it. And those that can on either side of those camps just have my ultimate respect. Yeah. You know, and I, that's why I, music, I mean, you know, I can go, you know, I'm about to go to Ireland. Uh, um, later, I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> later this week and and i'm and i'm looking forward to hearing those sounds uh you know those sounds of ireland and when i like i listen to anushka shankar and and you know the people that are playing that indian the sitar and things like mm -hmm. that i uh, it's it's i'm there you know I, yeah, what is, I, mean, I can't uh you know you can't put a price on something like that it's, it's no, no. But the ability for music to take you to another place or another time or another world is unparalleled yeah yeah it's pretty cool it's pretty yeah. cool and i appreciate what you're doing i uh, appreciate all the philanthropy work i uh, you know thank uh, you you know it that is it, it we need more of that in our society for sure uh you know and the sound you put into the world uh bob it's 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 great, man. You, 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 Thanks, man. That's I really my life. It. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, my door's always open. Let's let's do this again for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. Maybe we can do. Right. Uh, maybe I can get uh, Dan on one of these, and we'll we'll talk about the Operation Paperclip because that was a fun, a Fantastic. fun event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to. All right. Sounds good, All man. Right. All right. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Take, Take care. care. Bye, bye.